Python. Um, uh, I need, did you did you uh, have a screen to share? Yeah, I can share the screen. Okay. Cool. So we'll wait for yeah. I'm seeing your screen. So. Um, so I go to the background and uh, give the floor to you, uh, Krishna. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting talk on geospatial analysis with Python. So on, uh, I guess the day before yesterday, I had the same topic for the workshop and we spent amazing four hours uh, dealing with, with, with starting with, you know, what exactly is Python all the way up to using some basic libraries to do geospatial analysis with Python. If you're interested, you can check out the GitHub link for the same. I have all the notebooks and then all the basic uh, introduction about those notebooks in the GitHub link. A uh, little bit information about me. So uh, my name is Krishna. Uh, you can visit my website. I'm a freelance web GIS developer. Um, I do a lot of content creation as well on YouTube. So if you are interested into web GIS, you can definitely check out my channel over there. And uh, today we'll be focusing on geospatial analysis with Python uh, with with the consideration that I have in my mind is that most of the viewer um, are, uh, have, have just started learning Python or they have like no information about Python. So they come from a non-programming background and they're not sure that uh, maybe, maybe they should learn Python or not. So uh, this is something that we'll discuss and then we'll move forward. So uh, basically when you think about Python, it is not just useful for the developers, but I think it's a very important tool also for the, uh, also for someone who are, uh, who are working as a, as a GS analyst. Uh, the reason being that is that once you understand Python, it can help you to automate a lot of your tasks that you are doing right now. Uh, maybe, maybe when you're working or even using cron jobs, you can, you can like automate it entirely. Uh, Python uh, at the same time has has application almost in all uh, all of the technology uh, like all of the fields. Let it be health related, education, GIS, everything like that. So understanding Python can can definitely earn a new bread and butter. Uh, so for for this talk, I have divided the entire uh, entire learning geospatial Python into a couple of roadmaps, and of course, uh, this is just scratching the surface. There are so many things that you can do with Python. There are millions of libraries, and then and then millions of use cases. But then, uh, what we are trying to do over here is that if you have never worked with Python, if you have never did never did the geospatial analysis, uh, this might be a good starting point for you because then. Uh, by doing this, you'll you'll have some sort of idea about the capabilities that Python uh, Python holds, and then after after learning this, everything is just you know depends upon your imagination. You can you can take it in any dimension that you want. So of course, if you're starting, uh, the very good thing for you can be to to just brush up the knowledge of GIS concepts. So this can be very basic things like understanding the types of data, and 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 also what are different geospatial operations. So point, uh, I mean, the buffer contains everything like that. And then, of course, uh, we have to start from the very basics, understanding Python at, 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 uh, at a basic level. Once we understand this, we can then move forward with, uh, with understanding more about GDAL and OGR and its co command line tools, uh, because this is where most of your tasks can get automated and can can make your life very easy. So even a simple thing like taking a taking a shape file, converting into different different formats or or let's say different projections. Uh, if you want to do it for once, you might be you might you might use QGIS or or ArcMap or anything like that. But if you have tens and thousands of such files that you want to convert, maybe using command line is the is the fastest way to do. Once we understand that, then we move a little bit forward and, and understand the vector data and, and how to deal with vector data in Python. So uh, again, when we say vector data, there are so many ways from where we can load the data. Let it be, let it be file, let it be post, guess, anything. And once we have the data in the Python, then comes the main uh, main part where we actually perform the special operations on it uh, and, and make sense out of the data. So so whatever data that we have, we are loading, we have to be sure that Python understands that it's a location and not just uh, random numbers and then make sense out of it. 
uh, once we once we do that, then we can move into the visualization where we actually understand that how this data can be visualized in a way that it makes sense to to someone who looks in uh, looks at this data. Uh, this is where a lot of the data science and 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 researchers. Uh, and and data scientists actually comes into the picture because by doing this they can present their data in a in a way that they want to. Uh, this is how we play with the vector data. We load the data. We do the operation. We visualize it. We can maybe also export the data. Uh, then then we can also also understand how exactly raster data uh, can be treated with Python. Uh, one of the main reason why we use Python is because of its speed and its computation powers. And of course, when it comes to raster data, we have data in each and every pixel that we want to deal with. Uh, so obviously, Python becomes a, uh, a sensible choice to use, uh, to use uh, as, as a programming language to deal with the data. And finally, we will also see how to create the interactive maps. So the difference between uh, between visualization and, and, and this mapping type can be that in visualization, it is more or less like a static data. So you can you can create the visualization and then export it as PNG, but, the, uh, but then that's the end of the story. When it comes to interactive map, you give your user sort of like an uh, ability to 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 play with your data to play with your map and then and then make sense out of this so we'll see a couple of libraries like folium ipy leaflet pydeck and and things like that so uh, if you follow this this road step you will have a basic understanding of python and of course the the geospatial component attached to it and then from here you can take it in any direction that you want uh, so we'll just go through each one of these roadmaps uh, in in, uh, in 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 next 25 minutes so as I said, the GS concepts. Uh, I don't. I don't think I need to spend much time here. Everyone understands vector data, raster data, special operations. Uh, all of these. All of these concepts. Once you understand, you can then try to utilize this with Python. Uh, next big thing where you want to take stop and then you you want to spend more more of your time is 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 making sure that you understand python correctly so it can be starting from a very simple thing like understanding variables what are different data types lists dictionaries in python uh, and then understanding what are functions in python and how you can execute uh, specific commands in python whenever you want to using functions and arguments and then how you can connect this with loops so that you can repetitively call this function on each data as, as you move forward. Uh, you can also learn about conditions and then you can decide how exactly your Python code is going to execute depending upon, uh, depending upon how, your, uh, how your output or your input is behaving. Uh, once you clear these basic concepts, you can definitely move into more advanced level, uh, more more advanced level concepts such as creating your own classes and objects and um, and and creating decorators, which helps us to which helps us to uh, change the function without actually changing the functions. So um, Python in itself is is quite huge, and 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 just learning Python is also enough for you uh, to 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 earn bread and butter. Uh, but once you understand Python, and if you uh, if you like it, just uh, you can then just take it uh, one step forward and understand different Python packages. So one of the reason why Python is so famous is because because of the packages available, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You don't have to write the code from scratch. You can simply use the packages which are already available, and then you can build your business logic on top of that. So. Um, some of the most important packages, which uh, which are used by almost all data scientists, machine learning, uh, machine learning uh, uh, developers, uh, and and artificial intelligence people are are NumPy, which deals with basically list of data. Uh, but then the but then the advantage of NumPy is that it's it's significantly faster and it provides more way to deal with the data rather than creating a traditional Python list. Then we uh, then we can also study pandas, which is basically a uh, which is ba basically a package built on top of NumPy, which helps us to deal with the with the structured data. So you can uh, you can consider pandas as a combination of flexibility of Python and the and the power of of something like Google Sheets or or Microsoft Excel or something like that. And then finally, for visualization, we uh, we we understand Matplotlib and Plotly, uh, as as these are. Uh, uh, these are some of the very famous uh, packages that uh, that people use. Let it be a special data, let it be non-special data, in order to uh, in order to show the data. So by using Matplotlib, you can you can create graphs, you can cre create scatter plots, you can create histogram, pie charts, and things like that. And the very interesting thing is that all of these packages are connected with each other so that 
even though you have your data in pandas uh, you can actually take that data and show it in matplotlib with the with the with the way you want so this is one of the advantage um, of of uh, of of learning these packages and then once you do this then you can move uh, one step ahead when you where you learn frameworks like django uh, flask api fast api and things like that to build more scalable secured and and, and stable applications uh then we move into the world of gdal and ogr where we understand what are all the capabilities that these uh these these uh, uh, libraries hold so for example i have some some of the uh, basic command line tools that i use every day uh, to to treat the data so for example if i want to add multiple tips together i can do that by using gdal merge if i want to create the the tiles for a specific zoom level based on the geo tiff that i have i can do that by using gdal to uh, gdal to tiles.py i can also use ogr to ogr command line tools to convert data from one format to another to change its to change its projection from one to another uh, and even to Uh, to query the data and then save the data so for example if i have data for entire world and if i'm interested in data just for india uh, i don't have to actually go to any software and then and then uh, scrap that data out i can simply do that by providing a where clause in my ogr to ogr command line tool uh, so by understanding these command line tools uh, our life becomes uh, very easy and then it saves a lot of time for us as well uh once you understand that you can actually use the same knowledge into python as well uh, by using gdal uh, gdal and ogr python packages uh so as i said that in vector data we have to we have to actually learn few things uh in order to get get a complete o picture picture about how vector data can be treated in python so we start with the very basic of loading the data uh and then making geometrical data on the fly then doing some special calculations special operations in python itself and then of course visualizing the data so one of the most famous library for for geospatial analysis uh, for vector data is geopandas as it combines the the power of pandas and numpy and then it mix it with the uh, with the other other packages such as shapely and fiona which are uh, which are dedicated for for geospatial work so if you consider shapely uh, so it allows us to create different geometries let it be point line uh, multi line multi polygon anything like that and then fiona is basically a python wrapper of gdal and ogr so fiona helps us to load any special data and then also export any special data read more information about that special data so as you can see that these all of these libraries are good at doing something but when we combine all of these libraries we get a library where we can we can process the data very fast and then we can also uh, make the special operations so as we can see that uh, by using geopandas we can load the load the data which is available on the disk we can also connect our own database and then load the load the data from there uh we can also load a csv and then create the geometry on the fly so so i had the csv known as stadium and then i had a longitude and latitude column which had the which had the actual coordinates so uh, instead of just treating those coordinates as numbers we were able to convert them into the actual geometry which makes sense uh for uh, for geo uh, for geo pandas so that we can do the special operations on on that um once once we understand this we uh, once we understand this we can actually get into the special operations uh, so here we can also see that we can also create the geo geo data frame from scratch so if i have no sort of like data to load but if i want to create it from scratch i can then use the shapely geometry to create the actual geometry and then i can add all the all the metadata that i want to add and then i can create the actual data frame uh, which then i can if i want i can export as a as a shape file as a geo json or even i can push it back to the database so once we understand that how to get the data and how to put that data back into the uh, into the different uh, different stores we can then see that what are the actual capabilities that that geopandas hold so for example doing special operation so in this example uh, which we see on the screen what i am trying to do is i have two uh, world level shape files so first is countries 
where I have polygon for all the countries, and second is airport where I have all the point data for the uh, for the airports across the globe. Now, what I want to do is I want to assign that which airport actually belongs to what country, and uh, to do that, basically what I do is I use the shape of 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 country as well as the airport. So first of all, what I do is I take the India out of all the countries data. and then i squeeze the geometry out so squeeze is basically a method available in geopandas which allows us to get that geometry in the in the shapely format and then what we do is we use that shapely format geometry to treat uh, to treat it with the with this geometry of each airport so what we do is we do airport dot within and then the shapely geometry of india so by doing this we get the list of each feature that means each airport whether it is in india or not so i get true uh, uh, true or false like that so based on that i can get all the true values which will basically give me all the airports which are within india so like this we can do the we can do lot of special operations by using geopandas one of the other example is using overlay where then we have the base data and then we put our data on top of that and then we can either do union we can do or the difference to get the to get the difference geometry or the combined geometry so all of these things we can do inside the geopandas directly and then export the export the result the way we want so this is what actually makes the uh this is what actually makes the geopandas so famous and so useful is that we can do all of these things inside the geo data frame itself and then at the end we can export the data frame uh finally we also we also have to visualize the data because by just looking at the data on screen or or in a format of csv won't uh, wo uh, won't going to uh, will not make any sense at all uh by doing visualization and and using existing libraries like like matplotlib or plotly we can actually put the data on the graph so even though it looks like a map uh, at the end it is it is just a graph because as i said shapely geometries uh don't care about the coordinate system or projection they only care about the numbers uh, of the lat and long so we basically use shapely geometry in geopandas and then geopandas uh, the data that we have in geopandas we we pass it to matplotlib and then matplotlib tries to print it out uh on on the graph so it looks uh, even though it looks like a map it is actually a graph and then we can do lot of things here so you can see that in the first map i have actually colored uh each each one of the continent so so you can see that it becomes very easy for us to do all this coloring and 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 creating a image which we can export and then put it in our reports or anything like that so so we can add the title to this uh, to this to this graph we can add the x label we can add the y label we can also decide whether we want to see the numbers on the x and y axis or not and if you want you can also decide what numbers do we do you want to see on the axis so all these uh, all these freedom that we get when we use matplotlib uh, just like that we can also create a graphs where we uh, uh, graphs or i can say maps where we combine different geo data frames all together in order to create uh, in order to create one map containing all the layers so in the second example i have a base map where i have plotted all the countries and then i have plotted cities on top of that so here you can see that we can play with the marker we can play with the color we can play with the marker size and and there are many more properties matplotlib documentation uh, has all of this information given in a, in a very uh, a very easy way so if you just refer to the documentation you will get a get, get a whole lot of idea that what are the capabilities of of matplotlib now plotly is another great example of using uh, of of visualizing data on the map uh, the advantage of plotly is that uh, since matplotlib actually creates the image uh, you cannot uh, you cannot do anything with it it is pretty much just there with plotly you sort of like get advantage that you can actually pan on the map you can zoom in you can zoom out uh, even though it is not 100% interactive but still it gives you a very good uh, look and feel then we can see that how how we can deal with the raster data as well with python so as i said uh, at the end uh python is good with numbers so what we try to do is we try to convert the raster data into numeric format which we can then process so the uh, libraries such as rasterio earthpy matplotlib and numpy actually comes into the picture when we deal with the raster data
So for example, if we want to load any TIFF file, we can use Rasterio to load that file and then we can get all information about that file. We can get the we can get the CRS, we can get the number of bound uh, bands, the the bounds and and all other information we can get the width, height and everything like that. Uh, all this metadata is already available in the TIFF file as we all know and then uh, so Rasterio also at the end of the day uses GDAL to get all this information. So we can get all of this information from GDAL as well using command line tool, but we can also do that using Python. And as I said that at the end, what we are trying to do is we are trying to convert the, the raster data into, into, into array of, of, of pixel and then each pixels values so that we can utilize it. So here you can see that in, uh, in this example, I have just uh, taken out the first band of the raster. And then you can see that that is in fact an array of numbers. So you can see 0, 0, 0 because uh, as you can see all the four corners of this, uh, of, of this image has, has no data. And that is why we see the 0, 0, 0. Uh, we can also plot this data because uh, this array will contain information about each pixel and then based on the pixel value we can just keep on adding the uh, keep on adding the data to the raster and then we can show the data we can also clip the data based on based on uh, based on the the polygon or even based on the the pixel that we want so here you can see that this raster band actually has uh, as we saw the the width is 8971 and the height is 8961. So I can give any sort of numbers between that to, to, to clip the data. So in this example, I have taken from 3000 to 6000 uh, uh, on the x-axis and then 3000 to 6000 uh, 6, on the y-axis and then I have just gotten that data. So you can see that now this data actually shows some numbers and then based on these number, we have plotted the, uh, we have plotted the TIFF file. Once we have these numbers, then we can do whatever we want with it. We can uh, we can do NDVI calculations and 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 and, and everything with it. Uh, so here is the histogram created for the for the 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 this clip raster that we just created, and this histogram now now makes a lot of sense. We can see a lot of different information, the frequency, the DN, and everything like that. So this is a perfect combination of using Rasterio and then GDAL and then also Matplotlib to actually create the histogram. So uh, you will get an idea that you don't actually need to just learn one Python uh, Python package, but it is actually more like a combination of different Python package, each Python package focusing on just one task. And finally, we can also learn more about interactive maps. So if you guys have worked in the WebGIS uh, web domain, you might be you might be familiar with, with Leaflet or Open Layers or any sort of library uh, for, for putting interactive maps on the web application. So generally, we have a map object inside which we have smaller object like, like the view that where the map should be centered and, and what should be the zoom. And then based on that, we add layers. So it can be tile layer, JSON layer, or anything like that. And we can add the marker. So same sort of uh, same sort of uh, chronology we can follow for for uh, for this IPy leaflet, which is again a very useful uh, Python package, which allows us to put the map, uh, which allows us to put the interactive map actually in the in the notebook. So here you can see that I have created this this notebook which shows all the cities and then I can click on the city to create the markers. Uh, so this actually creates more interactive uh, uh, interface for for users users to have a look. Just like that, we have uh, one more package known as PyDeck, which is actually the Python package for deck.gl, which is again a very famous JavaScript uh, JavaScript library for for visualization of of geospatial data. So, uh, so by by learning all these basic technologies, it gives you idea that from where exactly you want to go in in the in the geospatial world. So there are vector data, raster data, interactive maps, and and so on and so forth. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. And if you want to find this code, head over to GitHub, and uh, you can go to my repository and uh, my my. Uh, my profile and then find phos4g dash geospatial to to get this repository thank you well thank you uh, krishna for this uh, great presentation uh, giving us a roadmap and then doing analysis and then everything within 20 minutes and yeah. i thought i knew something about python i learned a lot in the uh -huh. last past few minutes and we have some questions i'll, I'll put them on screen 
sure. the one the most upvoted. Oh, there are even four, but uh, the one the most in, it would also be my question. You can read it, right? To work with Python. So for Chile people just cool. People just uh, listening. Uh, what are good environments to work with Python and with Geo libraries? I mean, Anaconda, Notebooks, Scutel, Golub. Well. Uh, so honestly, I have worked with with all of this. So I have worked with Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, so I would say that Jupyter Notebooks are a great way for you to to develop the code because of course you can break your code and just focus on one piece at a time. But then of course when you are when you are building the application. So for example, when I build my application with Django, of course uh, I have to then put put my actual code whichever I have built on on the notebook in inside inside my inside my django for example so i would say that uh, i think you can use anaconda because it a lot of these packages let it be gdial geopandas everyone has their conda installation so that is also a good way to go but then if you are just trying to just trying to practice or just trying to play around then the notebooks are fine okay and probably people should all always use a virtual environment Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, there's yeah. more questions. There, uh, the second one upvoted is um, that was one of the first questions. Yeah, I read it uh, for yeah. the listeners. Do you suggest Django or something else for development? Um, I am a big fan of Django. I've been using it for 99% of my projects. And then if you look at, if you look at, uh, you know, very, very big projects, for example, GeoNode, it also uses Django. So uh, there must be some reason, right? So if this, if for, just because these guys are using it, I also started learning Django. And then I found out that Django has a complete uh, you know, the community is great. And then it also allows us to create the REST frameworks, uh, APIs and everything like that. So I would suggest that Django is good when you want to build the entire project. But if you are just looking forward to create a couple of APIs and then and then that's all, then you can definitely go with fast API uh, or something like that. OK, you're not mentioning Flask. Oh, yeah, uh, Flask is also there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but, but fast API is, is yeah, you, you're right. Uh, yeah. right. Yeah. Or I, I should. Um, let's see. That's another question here. It's long. Uh, what is the best way to install? Oh, what's the best way to install GeoPandas, especially within a PyQGIS environment? There sometimes seems to be conflicts require separate installations, now, such as probably that's meant Fiona. Fiona, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, yeah, installing. Yeah, so I had the same problem actually when I was working with the Windows machine, and then, uh, and then just came and then asked me, please learn Docker, and that's what I did, and then it just saved my life. Oh. So <laughs> I would highly recommend that you guys to check out Docker. And yeah, I mean it's it's definitely going to be lifesaver. So yeah, I mean that's that's what it is because uh, as as uh, as we were talking, uh, th this is exactly what we discussed. So different packages work with different GDAL versions. And of course, you cannot have a couple of GDAL version running directly on your system. So it's better to it's better to have images, Docker, or, or maybe try to cre create separate environments. I haven't personally worked with PyQGIS, so I'm, 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 not, uh, I'm not sure about it. OK, thank you very much. We need to uh, wrap up. And uh, yeah, thanks again very much. Okay. And uh, Ciao. Give, give him. Uh, hearts and claps and you can can do that here at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> and we go thank uh, thanks very much Krista. thank you we'll, See we'll, you we'll be in touch for sure yeah make sure to okay. attend the make sure to attend my geopandas uh, geopandas talk as well coming soon bye okay